gentlemen welcome back to my channel this is just a quick tutorial on recognizing a heart attack um, I just want to clear up what I said in my handout that you get with this tutorial for those of you listening on audio I will read it under heart attack it says, a heart attack can lead to sudden cardiac arrest. The only treatment for sudden cardiac arrest is defibrillation from an automated external defibrillator. A shock from the AED stops the chaotic electrical activity and allows the heart's sinus node to resume a normal electrical impulse. There was a question about that on the NCLEX. So remember that uh, defibrillation allows the SA node to resume the normal pacemaker of the heart. That was an NCLEX question. Remember what I'm saying here this morning, okay? For those of you listening to the sound of my voice or watching this video this morning, let me go ahead and insert the question here, okay? This was the question that was on the NCLEX. The nurses attended a staff education conference about emergency defibrillation. Which of the following statements by the nurse would indicate a correct understanding of the conference? A. Defibrillation can be used to treat both AFib and VFib. Okay, that is not the right answer. Because those of you who I am tutoring remember my concepts that I told you for this segment that most of your uh, atrial problems can be treated with medication. The fact of the matter is defibrillation is used to treat V-fib. If V-fib, then D-fib. Remember? So A was a little tricky, but that's not the right answer. B, monophasic defibrillators deliver successful shocks at lower energy than biophasic devices. Don't know, don't care. I'm a nurse, not a technician. <laughs> no. I mean, you know, no. B definitely would not be the answer because I just want my AED to work. I don't care how it works. Okay? Let's look at C. Defibrillation depolarizes the myocardial cells and thereby allows the SA node to resume the role of the pacemaker of the heart. That is your answer. That's what I was talking about. Okay? And let's look at D. Electrical current is synchronized with the client's cardiac cycle prior to delivering the shock during fibrillation. Well, now that is impossible, okay? Um, the whole purpose of defibrillizing is to stop the chaotic rhythm and get the SA node to work properly, to resume the pacemaker of the heart. So D is not the answer. So the nurses attended a staff education conference about emergency defibrillation which of the following statements by the nurse would indicate a correct understanding of the conference? C. Defibrillation depolarizes myocardial cells and thereby allows the SA node to resume the, the role of pacemaker of the heart. That is the correct answer. That is what we need to know for the NCLEX. All right, let's continue with what I was saying here. So then I go on to write, notice the S wave is inverted, then jumps to an ST elevation. The R wave is irregular and always bradycardic. Bradycardia is less than 60 and tachycardia is a rate more than 120. Give atropine for both a heart attack and bradycardia. Remember that information for the NCLEX, okay? Remember that I said, uh, it's you know, let's not make this difficult, EKGs. All we're looking at is the P waves. If the P wave can be clearly measured, if the R wave is regular or irregularly spaced apart. Remember, 
count the little blocks in between the R's. If it's like, for example, <clears throat> if it's two blocks, two blocks, two blocks, two blocks in between the R's, then it's regular. If it's two blocks in between the R's, and then sometimes three blocks, four blocks, two blocks, whatever, right? Then that makes it irregular. Remember, we're trying to take an NCLEX exam. We are not learning telemetry, right? We're not learning in-depth uh, telemetry. By the way, if you do work on a telemetry floor, they will send you for further education. We're just trying to pass an NCLEX here. So remember, for all of your strips, always look at the P wave. Is it measurable? Can I see it? The R wave, is it regular or irregular? And then the rate. The rate is going to be a huge uh, thing. Is it 150? Is it 80? Is it 350? I've gone over that in another video. Um, now, the reason for this short tutorial this morning is because I wanted to show you on um, this video here, look at the strip in front of you, uh, both when a person has evidence of a heart attack, the ST, eleva uh, the ST wave can be elevated or depressed, all right? I'm not sure what they're going to show you on the NCLEX. If any, if, if they're going to show you the heart attack at all. I will tell you this much. If it shows up in place and order, which would you see first? You will always see the heart attack first. Okay? So this is why I am showing you what a heart attack actually looks like. It depends on the lead that you're looking at. Now, if we look at lead one here, we can see that the ST wave is depressed. See, a uh, lead one up at the top. The ST wave is depressed. On lead two, the first three heartbeats, the ST wave is elevated. And then the uh, next three heartbeats the ST wave is suppressed or depressed, okay? And then on lead three, the ST wave all the way across, all six beats is elevated. So the important thing to take away here is when you see a picture of a heart attack on a EKG strips, the ST wave can be depressed or elevated all right either one it could be depressed or elevated it's always going to be, be bradycardic okay a heart attack is bradycardic and the st wave is elevated or depressed okay um and you give atropine for bradycardia or a heart attack. All right. Now that's all I want to say in this short tutorial. Um, I'll see you in the next video.